So I'm trying to. All right, you live on Facebook. Okay. Hey, everybody on Facebook. Recording on Zoom. You're recording too. Okay. So my peoples, y'all know who y'all are. Y'all might have, I might um, need some help because I'm trying to um, work all three devices now. So anyway, so today, how's everybody doing out there? Um, a lot has happened in the last two weeks, but I know everybody, you know, the most trending topic is, you know, DMX passing away. And I do want to start off the show with saying, you know, rest in peace to DMX. Um, he, he's, he, he was older than me, but he came from my era. You know, I came from the era of DMX, Rough Riders and all of them. Now I'm telling my age, and you know how I always say I'm 26, but now I'm really telling my age if I'm saying I grew up on DMX and them. <laughs> the cat is out the bag. Hey, Toro. I, I'm not really 26. <laughs> so if everybody, um, I don't know if you guys saw what I was promoting the show. When I was promoting this show, this show we're going to be talking about is being, hey, Troy, is being single, like, the worst thing that you can ever be. Like, I mean, is that the worst thing ever? Hold on. I'm trying to connect to Facebook so I can see the um, comments as well on, um, on Facebook. Okay, so here we go. So I will, so I can read all the comments, y'all. Hi, everybody in Sedorland. I'm in Sedorland as well. Give me a minute. I'm figuring this out. Okay. So yeah. Oops. <laughs> so like for y'all who just tuned in, if y'all haven't known, if y'all haven't heard me, I'm gonna be doing the show all by myself today. The guest that the guest that we did have. She got sick. Well, she's not really sick. She has the allergies and she, she doesn't sound um she doesn't sound good to be on the air. So, you know, we're gonna just reschedule her. You know, she was supposed to be talking about um finances because she's a financial planner and selling insurance. Well, she's a um insurance agent. We could talk briefly on that. I'm not no insurance agent, and as far as my finances is concerned. I just feel like I need to shop all the time. So I'm not be the one, I'm not the one to advise anybody on their finances. <laughs> um, Lonnie Love sent a request to join. Okay, who? Okay, how do I do that? Mm. Lonnie Love, okay, I'm trying to get you to join. Waiting for Lonnie Love. I, I think you just now asked to join. Hi, Lonnie Love. Okay, and you? Oh, that was my accident. Okay. All right, so I don't know how to X you off, so you can X yourself out. All right. All right. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so anybody that wants to join in, they can join in. And anybody that wants to call in, let me give y'all the number as well. One of my peoples can pin the number on there because I never remember it. Let me see. Let me see what is the number. So anybody that want to call in, y'all can call 929-231-6415. The number is 929-6415. So anybody that wants to call in, y'all can call in. And I got both of my lives on um, Brooklyn, Fatima, and on Uncensored. So if anybody wants to join in on video, y'all can do that as well. So we're going to be talking about um, a few things. Uh, first of all, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Um, and we're going to be talking about, you know, some of the things. I'll probably be all over the place because I had one thing planned, but now I'm going to be freestyling. <laughs> but we are going to stick to the topic. Um, we, um, we're going to be talking about, you know, being single. Is single like the worst thing ever to be? Because I hear a lot of people talk about, you know, single as if it's a negative thing. And I just wanted to know, like, what everybody else felt about that. Can the, if, can you, do you think you could be single and happy? Or do you have to be in a relationship in order for yourself to be happy or for somebody to consider you happy? Because I personally think that, um, hi, Michael Bowles, um, a lot of people will be thinking, like, you could be the best 
You can look good. You can have a career. You can have everything going for yourself. And but they be like, yeah, but he's single. Or I wouldn't even say he because they don't really look at guys being single as a negative thing. But a girl being single, they be like, yeah, she's this, she's that, but she's single, as if it's like some sort of bad thing. So um. I want to talk to people like, is what, what's so wrong about being single? And I know a lot of people, hey, Shannon, <laughs> and I know, what's the topic? Here we go. Okay, listen, we're talking about the topic about being single. Is that the worst thing you could be? Like, why do everybody take being single, a woman being single as a negative thing? But if a man is single, it's not looked at it so negatively. So I myself am single, but I feel like everybody I feel like any woman that's out here single right now is single by choice. I know some people might disagree, so I want to I wanna um, see what everybody else thinks. I feel like anybody out here, whether it's man or woman, if they single is by choice, because I feel like it takes nothing to be in a relationship. I see a lot of people that's in relationships. Uh, it don't take nothing to be in a relationship, but it takes a lot to find your match, to find somebody that you can grow with, you know, that, you know, it's gonna be a productive, healthy, non-toxic relationship. I see a lot of people that's in relationships that's unhealthy and it's toxic, but they won't leave and they stay in it because they don't wanna say that they are single or for some reason don't wanna be alone. Okay, so I'm gonna read some of the comments. It says, and some men are single by choice as well. It takes nothing at all. I, I feel like guys being single, they is definitely by choice because at this rate, it's so I might sound a little biased, but it's so many women out here that's good women that look good, that's good and all that. I think if a guy is single, he literally wants to be single because he don't want to be in a relationship. It takes nothing for you know a guy to not only just be in a relationship, they can find them a good woman, but it's hard to find a good dude to be in a relationship with. So I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying that you know men are not single by choice. Of course, that goes without saying. But it's not they're not when men are single, it's not looked at as in a negative way. But when women are single, it looked at it like, yeah, that's why she's single, as if it's some sort of curse. Okay. Like if somebody is single, if a woman is single, you better believe that she's single by choice. Because it don't take nothing. You got ugly women, you got women that's fat, you got women that's skinny, you got women that don't got good hygiene. You got women that don't cook, don't clean, nothing. I mean, got nothing really going for themselves and they they in relationships. So if you see a woman that's single, she's single by choice because it doesn't take anything to be in a relationship. And women out here, it don't, it's such it's such a shortage of men that they, it's, it's, I feel like a lot of women out here are just like settling. But there's a lot of women out here, a lot of people in my immediate circle that is single and it's all by choice. Like any one of us could be in a relationship, but it's the, it's not about being in a relationship. It's about the quality of relationship. What kind of relationship? I feel like a lot of um, toxicity, toxic relationship is being promoted. Hey, hey, Travis, I think that's you, Travis. Hey, Tank. I think a lot of um, toxic relationships are being um, promoted, like, like, you know, a whole bunch of cheating, a whole bunch of disrespect, a whole bunch of, you know, just a whole bunch of negative stuff that's going on in these relationships. And people don't care as long as they, you know, in a relationship. So I want to ask people out there, Shannon said, it's a shortage of women as well. You, as well as you, any one of us. Well, I don't know. This is this what we could debate about. Like, this is a whole conversation that we have. Hey, okay, Travis. Um, this is, I think that's Travis, Palm SJ, SG. Um, this is what we, hey, Vanessa, hi, everybody that's joining in. This is what we can debate about. Um, the, the fellas out there, I want y'all to chime in. I'm saying that I think it's very easy. Well, I'm not going to say it's very easy, but it's easier to find a good woman to be in a relationship with than it is to find a good man. So I feel like a lot of men that are out there that are, um, single is it's definitely by choice because these women are dying to be in relationships it's women out here i just wanted to know like where is the line because i know a lot of women that are single and i know a lot of uh, women or just people women in general that are in relationships but they're not how they're not happy and they're taking like a whole lot of shit 
So, um, you know, it was certain things that I, that I had, that I wanted to jot down that was in my thoughts um, prior to the show. So let me get to my notes, y'all. Okay, yeah, so like I see a lot of women that are so fixated on being in a relationship that they will compromise anything and everything to be in a relationship. Like I seen women who have turned on their kids and put their man, put a man before their kids. So hold on, somebody said, yes, I agree. I know more good women that's not in relationships. Exactly. I know more. Vanessa said true as well. Well, we're being biased, um, ladies, because we're the ladies. That's why I want to know. Like, okay, fellas, speak up. Y'all oh, y'all y'all in the comments as well. Cause we we feel like it's um it's it's harder for us. Is it harder for you guys to find a good woman? Shannon, Shannon Sharp, Shannon is a guy so for those who's listening. He said it sucks to be those women. <laughs> So yeah, I know there's a lot of women out here who will just compromise and sacrifice everything just to be in a relationship. I've seen women like literally turn on their kids, put a man before their kids just to be in a relationship, to stay in a relationship. I've seen women compromise their sexuality just to stay in a relationship. I've seen, y'all know I always talk about, I don't get the whole concept of threesomes. But I know uh, so many women who, who, who say that they give their man or their husband threesomes, but they're not into women. And I'll be like, that shit doesn't make any sense to me. So how do you, you know, how are you not into women, but you, you know, have threesomes with women just to please a man? Now, my thing is this, a man is not going to give you no that type of threesome if he's not into men or whatever. I just see a lot of women just doing the most just for a man, just to stay in a relationship. I seen um, myself included a set. Now I'm not, I'm not going to say upset, except, but there's a lot of women that have stayed in relationships a day longer than they had to. There was a lot of infidelity going on and they didn't just leave. You know, they, they stayed and for or, or, or not even said nothing at all. There's women that stay in, um, verbally abusive relationships and physically abusive relationships they do all of this just to say that they in a relationship or just to be with a guy i'm like i personally rather be single than to be going through all of that so i when some people be acting like oh like single is a negative thing i'll be like um i think being in a relationship and being unhealthy and being unhappy and miserable and un, and um and in an unhealthy relationship is far worse than being single so, um, so what are some people saying here? Yes, trying to see good in people, but that, but that has a lot to do with self-esteem issues. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, so what are, uh, my, my question is for people out there, what is like, you know, what are the, some of the things that you will not take just to be in a relationship? Like, what is the, you know, where's the line drawn at for you guys? Because I don't understand. I feel like there's no line being drawn nowhere in a lot of these relationships. I want to be in a relationship where it's healthy. I, I, I don't want, I don't want, like, I put up a, a meme the other day where it has said um, something about um, let's make, let's normalize treating women some treating women good in the beginning i mean treating the woman good from the very beginning of the relationship because i've seen a lot of relationships where you know people been together for 10 and 20 years and they got all of these stories now you know when you marry they say you get married for the better or worse but why is it i don't i think some people be taking that worst thing too extreme you know, I want to, I, I understand that you go through childhood tribulations or whatever, but most of the people that I know that have been in long-term relationships, they, they, done, they done accepted so much bullshit. Like, oh yeah, in the beginning, he used to cheat on me all the time. In the beginning, he used to beat me. Oh, he had a kid on me. Oh, he did this, he that, but we good now. Why can't we normalize being in healthy relationships from the very beginning? 
I don't, I want my narrative to be different. I have that, you know what I mean? I don't want to be um, in a relationship 20 years and 10 years and then have, have all these stories about what he did to me. And I had to, um, you know, we got past that. And I, I say, I think for women that, okay, let me read some of the comments. The men now that that's in tune with my wants and needs, anything that's not serving my peace. Yes, that's what Purity said. Healthy and financially pros prosperous. My thing is this. Um, those of y'all that follow me, of course y'all follow me if y'all on my page. I mean, on, on my live. I get into so many debates as far as, you know, what I'm looking for or what I'm not going to accept in a relationship. And some one of the things I was saying about, you know, me being in a relationship, um, a dude has to make more, more money than me. And, you know, a lot of people uh, disagree with that or wanted to debate about that. But my thing is this, I'm so comfortable on, in my skin and who I am and what I want that I don't, I'm not so, I'm not pressed to be in a relationship. Some people have this bucket list of what they want and then they get, they get, they, um, that bucket list gets shorter. I mean, like a list of standards or qualifications and that list, that list gets shorter and shorter as they get, as, as, as they start being single long enough and they start settling and I'm not settling because I, every time I settle for something or like, I, like, you know, I say, I want my do have to have this or my do got to have this kind of quality to that. And every time I compromise and don't do, and, and go outside of what I want, the shit never works. So I, I have set myself, um, you know, I have a, a book, uh, you know, a list of things that I want. I know everything is not, I'm not going to get everything on it, but some things are non-negotiable. So I want to know you guys out there, what are some of the things that are non-negotiable non -negotiable for you in a relationship? What is some of the things that is like a no-no? If it happens, you're out of here. Hi, William. Oh, no, that's Paulette. Uh, William's Paulette. Hey, cuz. Okay, so some of the comments says, in my younger years, I took a lot being through a lot, even was in a domestic violence relationship. Yes, because you're not being fulfilled. Okay, somebody else said, like, what's, what's non-negotiable, Fatima? <laughs> What, no, let, what's non-negotiable, Shannon? Like, this is not all about me. I want everybody to, you know, chime in. It's not all about what, you know, what's non-negotiable for me. What's non-negotiable for you, Shannon? Hey, Lee Diva. Hey, Miss Chocolate. Hey, Miss Mrs. Thompson 513. Hey, everybody that's joining in. Shannon, you, you putting up these shrugs like you don't have nothing that's non-negotiable. So you mean to tell me that you just take it anything, any woman that comes. Okay, what's not, let me not, let me rephrase it. Maybe what's not non-negotiable. What is, what, what is it that, okay, I'm not going to say what is you, what you won't accept, but what are some of the things that you, you are looking for in your significant other? And if they don't have it, it's like, a waste of time. You're not going to proceed on with the con proceed on with the relationship. Um, I'm trying to read the comments on on um what do you call this? Facebook, but this I'm working on this old phone because I got all my other devices um up. Peace, love, and period. That's it. So the person could look ugly, the person don't have to have any BAM ambition. The person don't have to have good hygiene. I mean, come on, let's be for real. I'm, I, I don't want all of these um, fake ass politically co correct answers. It's all right if you, you know, rough with little feathers, Shannon. I know it's all you not, that you're not only looking for peace and love. Hey, Rita, like what are some of the, the things that it has to have? Like for me, I was in two serious relationships in my life and, um, one of the things I know I always be talking about finances, but um, I also know the person, the next relationship I got, I get in, not to say my previous ones didn't believe in God, but I know they have to have a, a, a relationship with God. I'm not saying that they got a good relationship with God. I'm not saying that they got to be in church every day or they got to be at the mosque for Juma every Friday. But I feel like when people have a relationship with God, they believe in God and they fear in God and they, you know, have a love for God that there's things that they just wouldn't do. 
There's some people that believe in God, but they don't take God that serious. So the next person that I be with has to not only believe in God, but, but takes, you know, take God serious. There's some people that believe in God, but they will, you know, kill somebody or sell drugs or, you know, be, be um, abusive and all that. When you have love for God and you have, you know, um, God in your heart, there's this certain things that will stop you from doing certain stuff. If y'all get what I'm saying. Do anybody get what I'm saying? <laughs> Truth. Okay. So um, that's one of the things that I'm saying that is a must in my next relationship. Um, what are some of the things? Come on, speak to me, guys. What are some of the things? Okay, somebody said a man has to have patience. Okay, yeah, that is another thing. You are right. And another thing I, I believe to be in a good relationship and my and relation with me, I, as y'all can see, I'm a talker. I always be talking. <laughs> so I need a good communicator. I don't want nobody who, when they feel some type of way, they just shut down. They don't want to tell you how they feel. Or they when you feel in some type of way, they not even respecting how you feeling. They just, you know, paying it no mind. You have to be a good communicator. I feel like communication is a big factor in a lot of relationships. Lack of communication, it'd be the reason why a lot of issues is going on. A lot of issues that happens in a lot of relationships is because people are not communicating. It might be one person that's communicating, the other one is not, or they both not communicating. So somebody say, a good man will never have you settle. Exactly. He will not play games. So my thing is this, uh, exactly, Aretha. I feel like if, I've, I've always heard men say, um, men, you know, older men or mature men say that when they marry, they be like, you know, my wife is too good for me. You know what I mean? Everybody, a lot of men be feeling like they, 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 they didn't even deserve that the wife they get. So I feel like if you, a man really want to be with you and there's certain things that you're looking for or you want, and then he's not that person, he'll step, step his game up. Like, I feel like um, some people are just like, like I have um, had a post, I had a, um, somebody comment on my post on, 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 on Facebook one day and was saying how a lot, some of these women um, expectations is ridiculous. Um, what is these kind of requirements or expectations? Yeah, expectations is ridiculous. And I was like, I think that a lot of these men do not expect women to have expectations. They expect you for men to just come in a relationship as is, and you just gotta accept everything about them. And that for me, you know, that may work for some women, but that's not gonna work for me. Let me read, let me swipe down and read somebody comment. Communication is a factor, but he should also should be a great listener. Yes, I agree, Shannon. So women can't handle honesty. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, some women can't handle honesty. Talking is great. You have to speak your truth. Communication and understanding is an important. Um, okay, so some people said, somebody said that, some women can't handle the truth. I don't, I, I think that's a lie. I don't know. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. Ladies out there, what is it? Y'all can't handle, um, can y'all really not handle the truth? I can handle the truth. I'd rather take the truth because either way, I mean, if you lie to me, it's going to hurt me. If you tell me the truth, but I don't, I don't understand this not taking the truth thing. What do you, what do they mean about, hey, Gina, what do they mean about some women can't take the truth? I believe, somebody said, I believe that both sex, they can't take the truth. Is that what you mean? That they don't, that both sex cannot take the truth? So what, so what is a relationship just of two people just lying to each other? If you in a relationship and you can't be honest with the person, then um, what, what's the sense? What's the sense? I don't know. I'm not in no friendships with nobody that I can't be honest with. I'm damn sure not going to be in no um, relationship talking about building and growing old together if I can't be honest with them. And if I feel like they can't be honest with me or they're not honest with me, I can't be in no relationship with them as well. Um, somebody said, it's not what you say, but how you say things. Well, I kind of disagree with that. 
Now, the reason why I the reason why I say I disagree with that love versus hate. Somebody else said I'd rather for the person to be honest. Um, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I feel like that is just a cliche that people like to say, but it really is not true. I feel like no matter the person has to be receptive to what you're saying or be receptive of hearing it. No matter if somebody doesn't want to hear it, no matter if you say it nicely, if you say it blunt, if you dance around the shit, they're going to have a problem with it. Because I have been, it's, uh, excuse me, I have been in situations where I said it the nicest way and they still got offended or got upset. I've been in situations where I said it blunt and they, you know, got, you know, offended, off offensive, offended and defensive. So I really, I'm not one of those people. I do believe that you should take a consideration on how you say things. But at the end of the day, some people, I've seen so many people be so wrong in situations and the person talk to them so nice and try to explain to them and they still flip and got aggressive and defensive and stuff. So I personally do not believe that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I feel like just, just say whatever God, whatever needs to be said, say it. However it come out, you know, you, maybe I could debate about that, but some people use that as an excuse, like, oh, um, I, I don't like how you said it to me. If I would have said it nice, blunt, me, I still would have got the same reaction. It's just that you don't not want to hear what is being said right now. How many people agree with that? Um, too many sensitive people in the world, yes. We can't be wrong, we can't be wrong and strong. You saying you can't they can't be wrong and strong. How many people you know be wrong and strong? Or uh, there's a lot of people that be wrong. Hold on, sorry, y'all. Uh sorry. Um okay, see now I'm seeing the comments. I'm sorry, everybody on Facebook. Now I see the comments. Hi, Angela. Angela said God first is good. Um, yes. So now hopefully I can see the comments. I know I'm like, oh, I know people making comments, but I when I was swiping, I didn't see it. So now I see it. Um, yes, yeah, so we can be wrong and strong. Yes, I agree. Who else agrees? Does it, uh, uh, Simone, you the one that said, um, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Now that I explained it, how I explained it, do you agree or dis disagree? Have it, having you been in situations where you think that you were being very diplomatic about it and you said it the nice way and it still went left? Okay, somebody said also depends on who, oh, Simone said also it depends on who you talking. It's all about knowing your audience. Yeah, well, we not, it's not even about the audience. We talking about um, your significant other. Not we not we not talking about in general. I I mean in general, I feel like it doesn't matter what you say. I mean it doesn't matter how you say it. if a person is not um not recept willing to be receptive of it, it's gonna they're gonna get defensive and things is gonna go left. But I'm talking about significant your significant other. What are you talking about? You said you disagree. What do you disagree? What part? What do you disagree with? Oh oh okay. So another person. Um, another comment was how they treat their mom is the key. So, and another person said, because you can sugarcoat it, say it regular, straight up, but if they don't want to hear it, they won't. Thank you, Charlene. That's what I'm saying. So as far as um, Angela had just commented saying how they treat their woman, that's the, I mean, how they treat their moms. So I totally agree with that as well. Me personally, I don't have any kids, but, most of the men that I date or have dealt with have kids. And not only do I watch how they treat their moms, I watch how they treat their sisters and I watch how they treat their kids. Since I've been separated from my husband, I've been dating. It's so, I do not, I do not even play even before he and I got together, but I, I that's another situation I'll tell y'all about. I have, I have um, stopped dealing with guys based on I did not like how they were with their kids I had one guy when I was younger who was um took it his, his baby mother took him to child support 
and um, he was paying child support, but he wasn't seeing the kid. He was so upset that the mom took him to child support that he refused to have any relationship with the kid. And so one day, um, the the and he had moved, and the baby, the um, the kid's mother did not know where he lived at, and she saw him in traffic and followed him home. And, you know, pulled up to him and was saying, you know, your, your, your son misses you and your son want to see you. And he was like, oh, do you get child? Do, do you still get child support? And she was like, yeah. And he was like, is it ever late? And she was like, no. And he says, OK, well, tell him I see him when we turn 18. So now I was a girl talking to him and he told me this story. And I was like, you said that? And he was like, yeah, he was like, I don't want to be bothered with her at all. And I was like, so you mean to tell me, and he had a son. So I said, you mean to tell me that you're going to lead a young, you know how it is to be out here, to be a man, a male and black, that you're going to leave your son that you helped born in this world out here to fend for himself until he turned 18, because you're saying that you don't want no, no, no dealings with the mother. I gave him suggestions. I was like, you can, y'all can meet up. You don't have to see them. They can meet at the precinct, you know, with the, um, uh, leave them with a friend, you know, how you, you know, make, um, make arrangements or whatever, but you should just say, I'm done. And I won't see my kid until you're 18. I literally stopped messing with him over that. Now, since, you know, I've been separated, I watch guys who have kids and I'll be like, you know, I would talk to them. I'll be like, oh, so, you know, did you speak to your child today? You know, oh, when the last time you seen your child in conversation as, 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 as so as much as I'm in, into myself, how much I love myself, but if a guy is too much into me and he want to spend his every waking moment with me and he got kids, that's a turn off for me. I'll be like, okay, so your day is, or your every day or you just want to spend it with me. Like where the fuck is, um, I'm trying, I'm trying to work, work, work on my person. When do you spend the time with your kids? I, I don't even have no kids. And I feel like that, and I watch, I watch the movements of God. I don't understand how some women who are who probably already be single moms, they get in relationships with some men who already have kids, and the men be so much into them, and they be like, "Oh, my baby mother's crazy," and this, that, and there, and that's why they don't got a good relationship with they mom with their kid, and they fall for the old blanket over the whole trick. And then they get into the relationship with the dude and they wind up having kids by the dude. And then he wound up being a fuck boy and a, a deadbeat today kid. Like how do, and this, now I don't understand the people, women that, that have kids that don't pay attention to how the man is cheating the kids, his, his kids that he's already have. Now I don't even have kids and I watch that. So I don't understand how women with kids get caught up with a, um, a, a two-time um, deadbeat. Like he was a deadbeat to the first baby mother and now he a deadbeat to your ass too. How do people get trapped in that? Hold on. Um, let me read some of the comments. Um, um, somebody say treating your kids right properly. Somebody say he is an ad for doing, oh, if I guess I'm an ass for doing that, leaving your child because some support. That is a negative thought. Um, it's sad because a lot of men feel like that. Somebody else said, you are a good woman for saying that and taking that stance. There are women who does the opposite. Absolutely. Um, everybody think they're special. Exactly. Somebody said, everybody think they special. Every, that, that, that um, you know, it'd be the Debbie dads, right? And the only one that believes them is the new girlfriend. Oh, yeah, no, she keeping the kid away from him. She this, she that. I have so many debates about that because I know a lot of good fathers out here who literally have custody of their kids and their kids' mothers are not crackheads or nothing, but they went through what they had. They went through the course and went through all the um, necessary, court, um, necessary measures that they had to do to get custody of their kid. Um, and they did what they had to do. They didn't say, well, you know, I'm going to just make another one or, you know, um, my ch the baby mother is this and I don't want to be bothered and you know, stuff like that. So when people, when these men out here be saying, oh, I can't see my kid or I don't, um, um, I don't have a relationship with my kid because um, my, the ba my baby mom's crazy and she be not letting me see my kid. I feel like that is the biggest cap of all time. Can't nobody keep you away from your kid. 
when you go to court, there's people, there's men that used to beat the shit out of the mother and they still have rights to their kids. So I don't see, I don't, I don't, I don't jack no dude when they be saying, oh, I don't see my son or daughter because the the baby, my baby moms won't let me see him. All right, next thing you know, I'll be like, so what measures did you take? Did you go to court? No, I didn't go to court. I ain't got time for that court. I ain't fucking with the white men, the white men. Oh, okay. So then you just said F your child and then you move on. I don't respect that. I don't jack that. I don't want to hear nothing about a woman kept me away from my kids. Because most women, there's nothing a man could do to keep them away from their kids. Um, somebody said, girl, you're going to get the same treatment. Babies don't change a motherfucker. Exactly. These chicks are no limit soldiers. They fall for anything because they don't stand for nothing. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. How they treat their moms. Um, correct. It's um, It was some other key points that I wanted to get. Uh, uh, what do you got? You you remember Bowes? Who's that? Who's that, Rita? Normally, being a good man to a woman without putting them through. Oh yeah, so that was the that was the meme that I have put down. I said let's normalize being a good man to women without um putting them through hell first. And I I hate to sound stereotypical or whatever, but that seems to be the the thing within our culture. I seen I literally seen a month or two ago. Um, it was a video that went viral. It's one of these up and coming rappers. And um, he was proposing to his girl of 12 years. And he literally in the proposal called her a bitch. He was like, you've been my bitch for 12 years now. <laughs> We've been through it all. You know what I'm saying? You know what nigga fuck up and you stuck through me and all that. And uh, you know, I want you to be. And I was like, oh my, this was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating y'all. This was part of his proposal. This girl actually said yes. And there were people all in the comments saying, yes, oh yes, I love it. I'm so happy for y'all. This, that, and the third. I'm sitting here looking at, first of all, did he call her a bitch? He said, you've been my bitch for 12 years and we've been through it all. And I was like, Sometimes I be seeing things on the social media and I be thinking I'm the weirdo. Because I wish a motherfucker would propose to me like that. It's, first of all, for him to even propose to her like that, that must be their norm. Like he referred to her as a bitch on a regular basis. One thing about me, as tough as I may be, I'm, I'm, I'm real sensitive when it comes to being in a relationship and the way a, 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 um, a man talks to me, you know what I mean? I never, I don't, I never was one of those people where you, where we get in an argument and you, it's okay for you to call me a bitch. I don't call my dude out of his name and I don't want him calling me out of my name. Now, when I was, I had two serious relationships. One relationship I was with my, my first love, he got killed. We was together for seven years, seven, eight years and He's, that man's never called me a bitch one time in his life. Not one time in his life. Then I had my marriage. While we was together, he's never called me a bitch. But you know how these um, breakups and um, divorces and separations could be. Now he called me bitches. But, you know, we had minimum to almost little communication. When he started doing that, then that's when I knew that we definitely couldn't even be friends or be cordial. I feel like all the name calling... I see people do that. Like people have be in relationships and when they argue, they cut deep. They start calling each other by out of each other's name and stuff like that. Me personally, I, I'm not into all that. If we arguing, we're going to argue about whatever the issue is about. I ain't going to be talking about, you know what I mean? No other shit. Like, oh, your dead, your dead grandmother or your dead mother and stuff like that. That's, that's what I feel like is going below the belt. Um, he is boo boo the fool for calling her a bee. 
Is he really boo boo the fool or is she boo boo the fool? Like, I, at some point, you know, myself included, we, even though I, everybody always thinks that I'm always coming down on men, I don't come down on men, all men. I come down on fuckboys. But at some point, women have to take accountability for what they accept. You know what I mean? You saying that he must be boo boo the fool for calling her a bitch. She must be boo-boo the fool for accepting a um, proposal from a man that's referring to her as a bitch in his proposal. You know what I mean? Same thing with me. Like, um, those of y'all who know, you know, my testimony, you know, I was married. Well, actually, I'm still in, but we're separated. But when I was in, what, what, what made us break up was a lot of infidelity and a lot of disrespect. Now, some of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. Some of the things that I have to um, take accountability for, because even though it's it, sometimes it'd be one person in a relationship that's the main culprit, but the other person don't get off of, you know, taking no accountability because at some point you have to take accountability for sticking around and staying in the toxic or unhealthy, disrespectful relationship. So my, my in my relationship, I stuck a... Um, it wasn't always bad or whatever. Those of y'all that know, um, my um, I my my um, husband was locked up and I held him down for ten years while he was in jail. The he came home the first year. Within the first year of him coming home, he showed his ass, and I really we were separated by the end of the first year. I did ten years with him, and the first year of um him being released, he had um we 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 split and we have been separated since then but the first year that we were together um i was finding out you know about his infidelities and i kicked him out let him come back in kicked him out and can't let him come back in and the, i know one thing is some of the some things is sometimes you got to be careful who you're taking advice from and who you got around you you know what i mean i had got all kind of advice i got uh, she and I are not no friends anymore. But I had one friend in my ear telling me when I did kick him out, did leave him, girl, don't you be giving your husband and nobody else, girl, you don't put in too much time for that, that um to be um walking away from that. Now she was somebody who was married and was in a relationship, or in a marriage with her husband, where everything go. Both of them, they've been back, both of them been back before cheating forever. You know what I'm saying? She get caught, he get caught. And it's like, that's not the type of relationship I wanted. So when she used to give me that kind of advice, I'm like, girl, I do not want to end up in no marriage like yours. No disrespect. You know what they say, respectfully, you know what I mean? Then I had my team who wasn't necessarily telling me, you know, leave, but they was like telling me, Fatima, you know your worth. You know what you deserve. You know you were a strong person and you know you deserve better than what was going on. Whatever choice you make, we're going to, you know, ride with you and support you through it, but you know what you got to do. So that's the kind of advice that I got that I respected. You know what I'm saying? Um, There's so many people that are in relationships, like, you know what relationship bothers me the most? Not the most, but a lot. The um, Fabulous and Emily relationship. I get so irritated. I stopped, I, I stopped following him and everything. When he had, we already did not like how he used to not, you know, acknowledge her and, you know, treat her bad or whatever publicly. But then when he knocked her teeth out and they got back together, that shit bothered me so much. And when I be seeing they post pictures and their people be all underneath the comments, yes, relationship goals, y'all look so beautiful together and all that. That's why sometimes you just got to distract, you got to block out all the distractions and do what you know is right and what's best for you. Because there is so many people that's out here that is in unhealthy relationships and know that they're in unhealthy relationships and will encourage you to stay in your unhealthy relationship. Hey, Hermina, how they treat, okay? So let me read some of the comments. Imagine not having a team that strong. Oh, uh, Rita, you already know. Rita was one of the ones when I was going through my breakup. She was going through hers. We was helping each other, being each other's support system. 
Um, I heard I heard a person saying, "Girl, he cheated, but he pays for everything." Hell, you know, you know, we heard a lot of that, Rita. Somebody else said, "I got that. You had that support to help you through, and it took time for you to exit that relationship." Yes, yes, it definitely did. But um, I feel like um, some people, you know, it's not being helpful. I don't, I don't feel like it's not being helpful when people, like, if it's your loved one, I know they say you're never supposed to tell somebody to leave their significant other because the more you tell them to leave, the more they want to stay. But I really do not feel it's helpful when somebody you know that you love is in an unhealthy, toxic relationship and you telling them to work it out. I'd rather you just say nothing and just listen and be like, Girl, I'm here if you want to hear, if you want to talk. But do not encourage people to be working nothing out when they um in an unhealthy relationship, they being, you know, abused mentally, emotionally, physically, cheated on and all kind of stuff. Like, I hate to see people do that. Um, Somebody said, you know, my relationship goes and Angela B and her hubby. Who's Angela B? Who's Angela B? Everyone is different. What works for one, one might not work for the other. We, I mean, that's a nice little cliche to what works for every, what works for one may not work for the other, but we know unhealthy when we see it. And people are making unhealthy relationships work, but the shit is not good. And we got to stop encouraging or normalizing. I hear another thing that, you know, a lot of people normalize is that, oh, well, you know, men going to be men. Like they are normal. Oh, Angela Bassett. I don't know anything about Angela Bassett and her marriage. I, I don't know anything about this. She, she she seems to be in a good, healthy relationship. So my um Hamina says, no, that don't sound right. Yeah, we we're in this era where, I mean, we're not in this era. You know what else why I hate to hate? I hate to hear where everybody, as much as I, you know, talk shit about these fuck boys, I do know that there are good dudes out there. I have friends, I have family that is good dudes. So I hate this narrative that is trying to be, you know, promoted in our culture that I don't, I, I'm, I'm speaking for our culture because this is the culture that I'm in. You know, you know, men will be men, all men cheat. So it's like they're trying to condition us to get used to a man being unfaithful to you. And that's one thing I can't jack. I cannot jack being in a relationship with somebody and getting um just getting um accustomed to or just um you know ignoring the fact that they cheating. Like that's not okay. And what I don't understand, hey Ray, hey oh God. let me see. Oh, let me read some of the comments. I hope I don't okay. I never had a relationship go either, but I do love the way it appears, the way Russell Simmons loves Sierra. Yes, 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 I do as well. Correct, you don't know anything about it. You can see the love. Her mindset is not like any other. Yes, now I read that comment. I got distracted what I was about to say. What was I saying before I started reading the comments, y'all? Um, somebody refresh, refresh what I was saying. Remind me what I was saying. But yeah, I love Russell and Sierra's relation, um, Sierra relationship as well. It seems to be healthy. But like um, P said, um, I'm kind of over relationship goals. I never say I have a relationship goal because you be seeing, you be thinking people are so happy and so healthy. And the next thing you know, when they break up or the divorce is on the table, you hear all these stories about he was doing this, she was doing this. And you'd be like, these motherfuckers had me fooled. I'm looking up to them thinking that they good. I I, I, don't, I don't have no relationship, no um particular um couple that I look that I have relationship goals for, but I do, you know, commend some, you know, some relationship like Russell and Sierra and Sierra. I hope, you know, that it's healthy and is and it, and it's as good as it appears. But what about the ones that you clearly see that is toxic and unhealthy? <laughs> now, now, that's the ones that be blowing my mind. Um, I love your hair. You're not on me. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody say they love my hair. And no, no, all men don't cheat. They don't. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. 
Thank you. That's what you was reminding me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we that's what I was talking about. I hate this whole narrative that all men cheat. It's like these guys out, some people are out here literally have is men out here that's trying to brainwash and condition women to thinking that you might as well settle for me because I'm telling you, or don't leave me because I'm cheating, because you're gonna wind up getting with somebody else that's just gonna cheat on you too. I do not think all men cheat. And there's a lot of women out here that have accepted so much um, infidelity within their relationship that they even push in that same narrative. Girl, ch child, please, all these men out here cheating. They're, all men are not cheaters. Maybe the ones that you know are around you or you have been with or whatever. But since I honestly, since I um, broken up with my husband, the guys that I've been dating, I've never had, uh, the, um, cheating wasn't an issue. And we ain't even wasn't in a relationship. It never really was, oh, I thought they was talking to somebody else or was a girl. Even though we were just dating, they weren't, they could talk to anybody they want to, but it wasn't that. It was other issues or other barrier factors that, that made us not work. So I, 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 I've met dudes since my husband is not on that type of time that is all about, oh, all these different women and stuff like that. So that's why I know that it's not, that all men don't cheat. So I'm not, I'm not um, brainwashing myself into believing that all men cheat. Um, somebody said when they're not happy, that means they are not aligned. And when there is no alignment, you can tell. Right. No, you can read people. I, I know I can. The goal is always to love yourself, have peace, enjoy being best daily. Um, pray for discrepant. Yes. Now, the thing about it is, I feel like at this point in my life, everybody don't reach that that level or whatever. So I, my patience is very short. I'm not in my twenties anymore. I don't see how fully seasoned women who have been through a lot in relationships, keep going through the same thing and their current relationship or new relationship. Like I myself learned a lot from my marriage and I took a lot with me that I am not going to accept. I'm not going to have. And if that means me being single forever or single for the next five, six, seven years until I find my match, I'm cool with that. I don't get it how not just women, but men too. Men be like having like five baby mothers, six baby mothers, and they got a story about she ain't shit. This one ain't shit. That one, she's... This. And I'm like, these this is these are the women that you chose to have kids with. Five different women. And I mean, it's not like you were just dating. Nobody can't tell how a person is that they're dating. I'm talking about serious relationships. If every serious relationship that you're in is the same fucking story, that must mean you're making bad decisions. And at some point, you got to take accountability for the decisions that you're making and start making wiser um, choices. Who else agree? Anybody wants to call in? Um, one of my friends on my line, please pin the number when I say it. Um, as soon as I find it. The number is, anybody that want to call in, in case y'all want to type, the number is 929-231-6415 for anybody that wants to call in. 929-231-6415. Um, yeah, five different women, sloppy ass nigga. Oh, shit, are you still here? I thought you left us. Mr. Go to hell, you ain't shit. <laughs> Exactly. Um, oh, shit. Y'all, y'all know. Every time I swipe up, something goes wrong. Um, okay, so somebody said, I thought you were 26. Why is why are you on my line trying to blow me up? We already, um, we already just we already, you know, got past that. I'm 26 spiritually. <laughs> Look, leave me alone. If I want to, if I want to stick to that age, don't be coming on my um my page trying to blow that up. 
um, we have somebody else that said that's because they didn't learn the, their lesson, so they repeat the cycle. Yeah, I mean, how many? I, it's like you do the same thing and expect a different result. They always what they say they call that insanity. Another thing, like I'm, I'm this. I guess we. I'm just putting everything out there, you know. Today, I guess, because I have no co-host or no guests or whatever, we're going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to basically be talking about my experiences. And my experience, um, both of my so serious relationships were with street guys. And one, my first love, he got killed. And my second love, that's the one that I got married to. And he was in the streets. I thought he was done with the streets. And he wasn't done with the streets. So you know what the lesson learned for me? I don't deal with no dudes from the streets. No. I, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff besides. I know it's not just street dudes that do some of the stuff that they did. But I know one, one thing that I'm not at all, at all dealing with is no dude in the street. Like I'm, I'm a mature person. I'm a mature seasoned woman. And I don't got time to be going up to no jail bailing you out. I don't got no time to be sitting in the car and God forbid getting shot at because you got beef with this one or you got beef with that one. I don't got time for you to be, I feel like we work, you know, we both adults. I work, you work, we come home and we spend time together. I don't want no street guy that want to be in the, um, he want to be out on the streets hanging out on the corner and hanging in the project or hanging with his homies all day. I'm at, at this point in my life, I want a family guy, somebody that work and is about his family, ain't about his homies and hanging in the streets. That's my lesson that I learned. I don't know how some people keep on, even though I like bad boys, now I like, what do you call that, retired bad boys or whatever. Um, I don't know how people say they have a type. If you see that your type ain't working and your type keep on hurting you or your type keep violating and disrespecting you, dis disrespecting, it's time for you to change your type. Um, so they have to work on their inner self in order to move forward. Yes. Um, oh, shoot. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to read these goddamn comments. Oh, I'm hot. So nobody wants to call in. Nobody, what 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 else you guys want to talk about? So um, um, um in, in, in regards to you know being single. What do y'all feel? Some I see some guys joined on or whatever. Um, do y'all feel that it's harder to get a good woman? Or do you feel you could be honest? Because some guys don't want to be honest. Y'all know it's easy to get a good woman, but it's, it's a lot of guys that's out here on some fuckboy shit and they don't they want to be single because they want they don't want to be committed or, or whatever. So what do y'all think? Some of the guys that's on the line, do y'all think it's harder? It's harder to find a good woman, or is it y'all y'all being honest? Y'all know it's hard out here for women to find a good man. I am so hot right now, and my back door is open. I don't know why. Um, hello, people. Nobody wants to call in. I see y'all just list. I see y'all just watching me. I don't want to just talk to myself. I want people to chime in. Oh, I'm sweating. My hair sticking to my damn face and everything. Okay. What are we saying over here in Uncensored World? Um, oh my God. I wasn't reading none of these comments. Okay. Um, women that take more ownership through then. Okay, women take more ownership though the, the through I guess they say more than men but I have I, I absolutely agree um love is what it does hi everybody that joins on um uncensored land so um yeah what else do I what else some of the things else that I wanted to talk about Oh, no, I'm in the wrong. 
that I jotted down. Hi, everybody out there in Uncensored World or Slash Land. Oh, so another thing. What is your definition? Because it's a lot of guys in our in the urban in, in our in the urban community where they brainwashing women into thinking, oh, you know, what I mean, you gotta be a rider. What is your definition of a rider, right? Women out there, what is your definition of a rider? And men, what is your definition of a rider? I um I'll give my my synopsis of the situation. I think a lot of guys. Oh, what did I do right here? I think a lot of guys have um be pushing that bullshit about oh you got to be a rider, aka you can't you got to take my shit and never leave me. <laughs> That's what I think because I hear so many guys who have settled down and be like, yo, she's the one. I knew she was the one because when the dust cleared, she was the only one still standing. I'm like, what? Yeah, we've been through that. We've been through hell and bad. She done fought women. She done argued with women. She done caught me cheating. She done did this. She done did that. And we done been through this or whatever. And she the one that stuck around. So that's 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 my rider. That's who I'm married to. I mean, that's who I'm um going to marry. That's who, who got my heart or whatever. Hey, Trina. Hey, cuz. Yeah, so I want to know what's your definition of a rider because to me, I felt like it's um oh, okay, hold on. Hello, Cola. I don't know why this is vibrating. Hold on, Cola. Let me put you on speakerphone. Hello, Cola. Hi. How you doing? Just chopping up with you so you can have somebody to talk to. <laughs> Yes, because you see, I'm I'm having problems going back and forth reading these comments and stuff. So, what do you have to say? I think you know, my mentality is, is one of the weakest mentalities, but sometimes um, it's, that's the way to come to that. People can do a lot of things together because they that's just what happens. It's not that this girl just endured and took a lot of things. Some people down here do do things too to guys, so. It's all to me. It's, it all depends on the person and and, and, and they and they personal, you know, views and beliefs. That's why I never really judge too many relationships. Like you were saying, like um, I mean, I don't know what's maybe that's not. It's not a lot. Like the way he treat her is not disrespectful to her. Her views might be she loves the way he treat her. She's into that type of stuff. Some girls are into like disrespect to me. Well, well, you if you if you was watching them um, on a reality show when she was on a really reality show, she did not like how he was treating her. But she's just yeah. she's not strong she, enough to leave him. She wants yeah. to get married. He's not marrying her. She done. She she has verbally show her um her um what do you call that her unhappiness and she done said it. Yeah, so it's that it's not that's she doesn't like that. She's just settling it for that. That's self esteem issue for her. Then. Mm -hmm. She needs to go once she get her mind right and go to therapy and see her work. Then she out. She ain't gonna stay. I, I, she might stay. I bet to differ. It's so many people that stay for decades and then they don't leave. And you know when the relationship ends. When the dude get tired of walking the fuck over them and leave them, how many times have you seen that? Oh no, I'm not blaming the um, man. Oh, I'm, I'm saying you saying that eventually she will leave, and I'm saying that she may not ever leave. That's that's what she wanted. That's that's what that's what she chose. I hope she not um with that piece for herself. Right. It is a sad situation for somebody to stay all of them years and decades to end up really being unhappy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you, once, you go, once you go through so much stuff, you want to live a happy life, peaceful life, and live out the rest of your years. But some people are just trained that way of 
being used to being treated so messed up. They wouldn't even know what is a good thing when they do. It's it. true. It's true. And not not for nothing, you know, on, on like like you said that there is some women that like that. I know some women that like to fight they dudes. Like they 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 so toxic. I don't know how they got like this. You know what I mean? If they get into a relationship and the man ain't, they have to retrain themselves. You know what I mean? That they they don't they don't train themselves into thinking that that's normal and that's and, that, and that's how a person that's how a man shows they love. And I've seen women that got with dudes that don't do that, and they like he lame, he corny. I don't like him. They literally look for somebody that's gonna be abusive to them. Right. So. I feel like I feel like it's all about finding young. I know positive people that love it, love the drama, love the fight. That's why I'm just saying, like, what, 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 what some people see when I'm trying to be looking at them, like, oh, I could never. They love it. They, they like that stuff. So they know it's crazy. You right. Uh, you right. I'm, I'm only speaking from my perspective or whatever because I do know it's just some people that literally likes to be in relationships with, with with women that are not good for them and men that are not good for them you know how you know how many you know how many men that be like oh i want a good girl i want a good girl and then they get a the good girl and they treat the good girl like shit leave the good girl and wind up with a fucking piece of shit so it's like what do you really want you really don't want that like I, okay, I'm gonna throw myself out there again. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be cocky with it or whatever, but I am a good girl. I'm a good woman. For you, for my husband to do what he did and fuck up and do all the violation that he did, he didn't want a good girl. Guess what? We broke up. He started running around with all the little dirty project bitches that ain't got shit going for themselves. They fucking each other, switching and getting in threesomes and living in a trap house and all that. All these low frequency ass bitches. That's who he wanted to be with. So sometimes what you're saying is true. Some people are so toxic. They don't want nothing good. They want some toxic, some toxic person to, you know, to be with. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's like some um I, I, I hear that all the time. Like, you know, these guys, some guys be like, oh, well, I want a good girl, or whatever, or they get a good girl and then they always be cheating on them with some trash. You you are ruined what you got. But somebody that's not even worth it, that don't make sense. That's, that's so, like ego problem, it's a problem within themselves. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know themselves, know the it's true. And they and they issues within themselves. Like some of them may seem their mothers are toxic, or they just it's true. They grew up in seeing their fathers doing different things. So, mm-hmm. they don't want to be with about that when you said breaking generational curses and some people you know a lot of us have been traumatized and I don't want to use that as an excuse so you know I'm I'm into mental health and and stuff like that so the thing about it is sometimes people have been through stuff that makes them the person who they are and let's say for me for instance I can um acknowledge oh he may be like that because of the shit that he went through. But that still don't mean I got to accept it. You can you can understand somebody's trauma or something that they've been through or, you know, why the way they are, but that don't mean you still have to be accepting of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm
they can't be a better person, but why they can't be. They like being victims. Not too many victims out there. Oh my God. Speak on it. My yeah, thing so, is this, I, th- that, that whole victim mentality, which you just said is absolutely right. Like that's why I'm really saying that I'm taking accountability for the role I play in the demise of um of my, of my, of, um, my marriage because a lot of people like to play victim. And, and one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be labeled as a victim. But some people take pride in saying, this person did that to me, that person did that to me. I'm a motherfucking wolf. I don't want nobody. I don't want too many stories talking about you did this to her, you did that to her. That I don't understand that whole I want to be a victim role. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be known if you put that be like, yo, don't play with her. That bitch is this. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I like that. I like that title. I don't like the title of yo, she's been through so much, yo. He did this, she did that. I don't even want to talk. Nah, that that's not. I, that's not what I want to be known for. But there's so many women and men that likes to. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say men. I don't see. A lot, I don't see men liking to play victim a lot. Only how they like to play victim is when they get caught by the um woman or whatever. They be like, well, you know, uh, my mama. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that when they want to get out of trouble, they like to play victim. They want to be saying that shit. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. Honestly, you're right. You, you. I, I was just looking at it as a relationship, but you're right because a lot of these men come up with excuses about, oh, I can't find a good job, or I can't this, and I can't that. So they like to do play victim. You don't know what it is to be a black man. You don't know what it is to have a felony. You don't know this and all that, and then you will give them solutions, and they won't even follow up on the solutions. They, they, cause they want, they so comfortable and content, huh? Well, you know me, you know, you know, you and I, you know what my thing is, I'm I'm very sympathetic, but you know what I say, it's a, it's a thin line between sympathy and annoyance with with me, you know what I mean? If you feel like, I I mean, I I, I sympathize that you may have a past and you, it's a reason why this happened and that happened or whatever, but then at the same time, um, if you keep talking about regurgitating the same shit. And, you know, keep on making excuses and keep falling for the same stuff. Then I start saying, all right, now, now I'm getting annoyed. You know, I'm the one with not the patience. Y'all got more patience than me. (laughs) I'll be like, okay, now I'm over this. I I, I, I can't do it. Yes, honey. But um, I, I I, I don't, I just, so my thing is this. Like, oh, yeah. So the main topic of this um, um, show was about being single. Like, you are in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And you saying, I mean, what do you think? You know, do you think that you could be happy yeah, if you weren't in a marriage? Up. Mm-hmm. Yes, I believe that. I believe a lot of happy single people and a lot of people in relationships that's very miserable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I, cause you know, you know, I, I have, I have this, you know, this conversation a lot, and some people, as it, it, it's always guys that seem to think that they want to mentor me, and they be like. Yeah, they'd be like, well, this is what you can do. And um, like, I, it's something that I have to change to be in a relationship. I'm like, do y'all know I'm not trying to be funny? But the only thing is a relationship, period. Any relationship you get in is about compromise. Mm-hmm. It is about compromise. Because you're going to have to compromise. I feel like it's, it's compromising, but I just feel like it's about finding your match. Some people be linking up with people that they know from the gate. 
ain't they match and they be trying to make it work and then it don't fucking work and you know i feel like every man and every woman has this ideal um significant other that they they looking for you know how she or he may look the thing you know the characteristics and all that and you know the bucket list so it's like it's like it's like a guy go a guy really don't like girls that wear weaves or, or um weaves or um wigs or fake hair and then they they um they all they trying to do is talk to girls with weaves and fake hair if you know you don't like that why are you even walking up that tree so now you're gonna get with a girl and then that you met with a weave and now you're gonna try to make her um go natural no i feel like if you know what you like Go for what you like and don't try to go for something else and change them into what you like. That's the problem. A lot of people, that's what people don't realize. You can't change your body. That person has to already want to be changed or want to be, like you said, has to have the characteristics that you're looking for. Hey, Nikki. So this is what I was gonna say. What you said is about negotiation. So like I like I said, I have this list, and there's some things that's negotiable, and there's some things that's not negotiable. And I feel like everybody has that. So like you said, if so, if a man doesn't like weaves, but she got everything else going on that he like, then that's a you know, it's not her wearing weaves is not a deal breaker. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like everybody gotta know what's what what's non-negotiable, what's the deal breaker, and what's not a deal breaker for them. So my thing is this. Um I, I, I just want people to stop, you know, acting like being, I mean, using the word single as a, in, in a negative, in a negative um manner. Like, you know what I mean? Yo, you people don't want to be in a relationship. I feel like I feel like well, I'm gonna say everybody. But I but you heard what I said in the beginning of the conversation, in the beginning of the show. You don't think that everybody is single at this point by choice? Because if, if those people that want to be in a relationship, you don't think they could be in a relationship right now? Some of them can, some of them can. So who you think can be in a relationship? Because they don't want to be. Like some, like some people, like people just can't put up with them. Like cannot, cannot, like they just stuck in their way. They live in a certain way. And they can't oh, you trying to say you think there's some people that get in relationships, but they always yeah. get left because of whatever issue that they have. It just don't work out because they, they're not, like they really not ready to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it takes time. Like you have to be ready to be in a relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And some are not ready. A lot of people aren't ready. I agree. I, I feel like, like you know, when I um when I first um got separated, you know, I had chill for a moment before I started dating, and then when I started dating, I I just think that people should know what they want, what they don't want, and I feel like everybody should be honest. Now, one thing about me when I was dating, I mean, when well, I'm still dating. <laughs> I said from the very beginning, I laid it out. Like, I don't know what I want to do. What is, you know what I mean? Like, I just got out of a relationship and this is the case or whatever. Some people be lying from the very beginning. You know what I mean? Like, and my thing is, I I went through a lot. It was a lot of lies that, went, that, ha- that was told to me and a lot of deceit in my marriage. I don't want to hurt nobody and I don't want to be deceitful to anybody. Some people get all, you know what they say, hurt people, hurt people. You, some people get hurt and they turn around and do and hurt um, somebody else the same way that they would have, that they've been hurt. That That's what I don't respect, you know what I mean? And that's what's wrong with this world today. A lot of people carry that toxic baggage all over their people and dump it on people and they don't even know that they have that toxic baggage. 
out there and start, you know, going out in a healthy way and in a different relationship with me. There's so, so much toxic stuff going on. So that was a, um, I had a, um, I had a debate when I was at one of my homeboys, the one I always be debating went on Instagram. He was on somebody live. One of that was one of the um one of the topics where they were saying, Do you think that a person needs to heal be- um before they start dating again? Yes. So a lot of people I know usually jump right into another relationship and then the same pattern is happening. Mm-hmm. Okay, P. So I got a, I got one a rebuttal for that, and um, you, of all people, should agree or understand where I'm coming from. I feel like I do think that you know it should be a little lapse in between jumping from one relationship to the other. It also depends too, because sometimes you could be in a relationship and you. You, you maybe not necessarily was cheating, but you, excuse me, you know that this person is not for you. You know that this other person is, but they, you know, like, you know, you got to cut things off or it's got to be a close chapter and you can jump from one relationship to another. You know what I mean? But then I, you know, this was the debate that was on this, um, my homeboy live where he was saying how he thinks that um, people should heal before they jump into a, another relationship. And I said, you know, and then his friend was saying that she thinks that, you know, she could, she think you, you're able to date while you're healing because nobody really heals completely. And, and that's how I feel. And I feel like when you're hurt or you've been hurt or traumatized, it's never, you've never really completely healed because at any given moment, something can happen that is like a trigger to take you right back to where that space is at or make you remember. So I don't think that anybody's completely healed. So I feel like you, you should take some time out where you, where, where you feel that it, that you got you, you got yourself together enough to move on. But to say, you know, wait till you heal, who's to say when you really heal? It's been me and mine's been separated for four years and you know, I still have my moments. Mm-hmm. And you know, and that, and that, all of that, so all of that is part of him because once you start knowing your triggers and you know what you are willing to accept and what you're willing to put out, that is a part of him. Even though it's still taking you back to that hurt, that other, what, what you already been through, but you, you, you're wiser now. You know exactly what to look for. You, you know, you know the signs. You already know. So I'm not saying you all got it all together. Nobody's never got it all together. Well, well, I'm not even, you know, it's, I'm, it's not even meaning that one thing in particular. Well, you know, you've been through trauma and it could be, it's not one particular thing. Like I consider myself, I don't, I won't say that I'm completely healed, but I'm over it. But there's certain things like if I'm talking to somebody or, you know, like dating somebody and if it's something that they say or do, and I'll be like, you know, it could be a trigger to me like, oh no, the last time I heard that, you know what I mean? Or it could just be in, I could be online and I see some of the stuff that some of the guys be saying, I'm like, this is the bullshit. You know what I mean? Those are triggers. So it's not one thing in particular. No, well, so I'm not saying I'm bringing it into my personal relationship. I'm saying like I could I could I could consider myself a basically um majority hill, but what I'm saying is any little thing can make you, you know, go, go back in that space, not not completely in that space, but you know, think make um bring up that trauma. Well, I should say, you know, bring up that trauma. Yeah, bring up that feeling. Bring so 
Yeah, I don't I don't really think that no one is ever completely healed. Yeah, but that's just life. Right. That's just life. So I we was talking about like going into another relationship, jump into a relationship, relationship. But at least you know though, some people don't know their triggers and react to certain things and people people and you like, damn, well, where did that come from? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know you're triggered, so you know you're not gonna react, you're gonna have to feel a certain type of way. And that's what being open and honest is you express that to whoever you trying to talk to or get in a relationship with. It's like, you know, I, I don't think that because it's XYZ and, you know, it makes me feel a certain type of way because I feel XYZ. Mm-hmm. Well, you know I'm picky, right? Yeah. Look. That's a part of him. Yo, and, and it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what's so crazy? You know me, and, and it's like I, I've I've dated a few guys since um you know me and mine broke up, and it's always me. Like it's like it's not like uh, everybody may think that I am difficult to be um you know difficult to deal with or whatever. But every dude that I talk to, it ain't it ain't like they stop fucking with me because I'm difficult. I stop fucking with them for whatever reason the case may be is. So I that's what I say. It's not I I the whole that's what I know about is not all men don't cheat because I have not had that issue since um I um you know got separated. It wasn't never no with me talking to guys Oh, oh, it's this girl or that girl or whatever. It'd be other things that I'll be like, I can't. That's, the, I, that's part of knowing what you want. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing to me because this is, because now you know exactly what you're looking for and what you want and you're not willing to compromise and um, settle for it. Mm-hmm. But some things you do have to compromise if you're looking to be in a relationship. Okay, so let's talk about one of the things that I had um compromised. So you know I'm big on I think that you know men supposed to drive. Men know supposed to have their own vehicle. And I was talking to a guy. I normally every dude that I've ever talked to had a car. So I was talking to this guy that didn't have a car. Now that was one of the things that's on my list to have. You gotta have. I I deviated from that and and said, you know what? Even in New York City, granted, parking and everything else, Ubers and stuff, you shouldn't mind. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not trying to get you with your car all the time and have you driving all around the city, then I understand. But listen, because New York is hard to park, it's hard, the insurance is sky high. No, but but P, but w- w- even if like you what you saying that New York is high and the insurance and all this other stuff, I just feel like hold on, hold on. If I'm doing it, I don't want nobody. I know what I'm bringing to the table. If you're not at least matching my shit, it's a problem because if you're not matching, I, it's, it's not about if you could. I, I'm pretty sure he could afford it. So that's what I'm saying. If you can't afford it, why the fuck you ain't got a car? Now I'm inconvenient, so I gotta always drive my car. Or who, the last thing you want to do after you go on a date. No. No, he was a public transportationer. Like you know where I live at. It's um two fair zone or whatever. So if even if he if even if I wasn't picking him up, it would take him two hours to get to my house because he wasn't even an Uber person. Yeah, well, he's he's on another type of time. Just, <laughs> he, he's doing something for I don't know whatever his business is, but if he was willing to, I don't know, compromise, but you can't you can't so let me ask you a question so that's just like you let that you're not you're okay you're married 
But let's say that you weren't married and you owned your own house, right? You would be okay with um, getting, dating or dealing with a guy who lives in a room? So that's what I'm but the New York City look New York City is very expensive. We can't keep on using that as an excuse because I'm a person who lives in New York City. Well, you live in Jersey now, but if I'm doing it, then I want somebody that is at least gonna be doing as I mean is coming to the table with as much as I got. I'm not going to dumb myself because all you're going to do is stress yourself out. Then that means you're going to turn it to the breadwinner. You're going to be the one that's making most of the money. You going I don't want that kind of relationship. So you got to come to the table with at minimum. This is why I said, hold on, hold on. We're, we're, you know how they say negotiate instant, right? Goes, you shoot high and then y'all meet somewhere in the middle, right? So when I say that I want a guy that make more money than me, that's shooting high. The but the lowest I'm gonna go is he matching me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He can't make less than me. It's not gonna work. <laughs> so I just feel like if you like if I got a house, I'm not. I don't want to get with nobody who's renting a fucking room. Cause then I mean, and I feel like if you rent a room and you doing that to build, I mean, save or something, I really think that you should get that and then pursue a relationship. I just think a lot of guys are not financially stable they're not stable at all and they trying to get in a relationship and that's what they shouldn't be doing you need to get yourself together and then try to because if you you not if my, my thing is if you're not adding to my life you're not adding any value to me i it's, 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 i feel like it's meaningless right and, and and you know there's people that dispute that and my um, dispute or argue with me about it. And I don't know why, because I'm not telling you what you should like or what you should want. You feel me? Like, this is my this is my preference. And don't try to sway me up to think or, or settle for less. You know what I mean? Like, if that's what I want and you can't do it or you don't agree to that, then keep it moving. Like, don't, it's, I mean, it's nothing to argue about. It's nothing to debate or negotiate about. What you want is what you want and what I want is what I want. But there's some guys that be like you see on my page all the time. Oh, that's ridiculous. Or this, that, and the third. Maybe that's ridiculous for you. You saying that you ain't gonna, you can't afford to help nobody um, pay their rent. There's a lot of people out here that can help. You know what I mean? What you can't do, somebody else can do. Just know what you could do and what you can't do, or what you aren't, are you willing gonna do? Are you willing to do and what you're not willing to do? And that's what I think, like, in the beginning, I think that, uh, I think that's why I said communication is very important. Like, people have to communicate more and effectively on what they're looking for, what they expect them, what they want, what their goals are. And if you're not on the same page, be mature about it and say, you know what, this is really not going to work. People be forcing relationships, Absolutely. knowing that it's not going to work. And that's and, and and that's that's the thing that I I'm big on. I um I know people say that you shouldn't do that or should never say that, but I do. I have regrets, you know. I regret certain shit, and I just don't want to. It's, it's some bad decisions that I made as far as relationship is wise, and I don't want to make the mistakes again. And then. Mm-hmm. And even if it's not toxic, you just know what you you, you know what you um mm-hmm. I like like I like I my, I had like I had two different relationships. I mean two relationships and two of them was different. Like my first my first love, he was a protector, he was a provider. 
But my 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 husband that I end up marrying, he wasn't that. Well, I he's not what I thought he was. I thought he was that, but I gave him more credit than what he deserved. And so that's the thing, you know. What I mean, you know, you have intuition, and this is this is what I mean about. Hold on, somebody said we're supposed to learn from our mistakes and not continue to do them, and then learn from our regrets, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. My thing is this: um, nobody's perfect, and everybody, you know, I, I I'm I'm very open, and I testify and give my testimony all the time. Sometimes it be it doesn't work out in my favor because I'm very open and I talk about some of the stuff I went through and then some people throw it up in my face later on or whatever, but you know, I'm tough. That shit don't bother me because there ain't nobody out here perfect and no, and we all done paid a fool for somebody or we all done did some shit that you may look stupid on or you shit in the dick. So I really don't pay that amount, no mind. So that don't stop me from testifying or giving my testimony. So my thing is, with me, um, I have two, two different relationships to compare things on, like what I like, what I didn't like or whatever. So when I get in, I know what was good for me and what wasn't good for me. So I feel like, you know what they say, third time's a charm. <laughs> I know, like, I'm not that inexperienced. I feel like my second, my, my, um, my, my marriage, I was very inexperienced. I, 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 um, you know, I had my first relationship. I was a teenager. We was together for a long time. And then I was kind of naive when I got into the marriage, but now I'm a whole season woman and I'm not budging on what I believe, what I want and what I think a man is or supposed to be. Hold on. Somebody is typing a whole bunch of stuff. What is it? When we have a failed relationship, we have to take step back and analyze what is a hold on and analyze it where we went wrong or what we could have done better and next time around we do better exactly i'm in my third serious relationship and with this one i know what i can tolerate what i want where i need to work on myself exactly charlene seven charlene with mad ease <laughs> She said that. Mr. T said, thank you. He liked you. And true. I guess the shit that you was talking, he said he liked. <laughs> but yeah, it's all about knowing, knowing what you want, what you don't want. And um, I want people to stop shaming um, single life. Because some of us is living our best fucking life, single. But very much happier than some of these people that's in relationships. I got so many people on my line or my call list that are in full-fledged marriages and do nothing but complain about their marriage. And I'll be like, why are you, why are y'all together? Well, no, I got people that are, are is 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 beefing or not happy because of financial reasons, like their husband is not pulling their weight and all of that. So it's not even that type of time no more. Some people are not in relationships because the man is the financial breadwinner. Some people are just in relationships because they don't want to be alone or they just got they just think being single is the worst thing ever. I, there's no way that I could be, huh? Right. My thing is this. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm all for marriages and I'm not for, I'm not trying to promote single, being single forever or just being single. I'm just saying if you are single or if there's people out there single, it's a it, it's possible for people to be happy and single. But I do know, I'm, you know, I'm a God-fearing person and I do know, you know, even in the, in the Quran and the Bible that we are not, you know, we are meant to have companionship. But if that companionship is causing headaches and it's not healthy, then it's better to be alone than to be in bad company. Financially, like everybody's not always going to be financially stable. 
everybody's not always going to have their shit together. But if you bring me peace, that's what I want. Mean. I need peace in my life. I've been through too much. Right. Somebody said, each relationship I had, I had a gap about three years, focusing on self, living on my life and working on me, knowing what I want and what I don't want. Be single yeah, too. You're ready to I'm love someone I'm else. Huh? I'm separated. That's me. I'm going to be working on me, purity, myself, and that's it. That's it. I'm going to be working on me, purity, myself, and that's it. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like if you happy, if you have, if you happy with yourself, you're going to be happy single or in a fucking relationship. That's why y'all people could talk. Yeah. Some people might think I'm vain. <laughs> like this girl always, this girl. Huh? Listen, and sometimes being single don't mean you alone. I mean, y'all already know. Like some people are single, but that don't mean they lonely. That don't mean they out they out the loop. Like they ain't got nobody in their life. Huh? I said that's why the world went for some of these men out here. Uh some some getting the benefit. <laughs> I, I know I hear you eating and stuff on, you know, yeah, you know, this is my um dinner time. I'm off the boat to Cass, please. <laughs> between the boys, Trey, and Cass, I'm off the boat to Cass, please. All right, thanks for calling in. Thank you. Have a good night. You good too. Night, good night. Good night. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Good night. Okay, Charlene, what are you saying? Right, I love you, Purity. <laughs> you are a strong woman, period. A mentor for sure. Yes, she is. Okay, guys. So what else? Oh, you have. Let me see. I have to scroll up. Kahari. I'm not good with these names. Oh, 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 look, my style is pretty styles. That style, this wig, she's on. And so she said, yes, the wigs look good. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to Pretty Styles. Yes, she's the one that did this unit. She keeps me with the nice wigs and stuff. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce that name. Wards. So I'm not even going to try to. Kahari Edwards. Kahari Edwards. Hi, hey, hey, everybody that just tuned in or is now tuned in. So anyway, yeah, so that's what we're basically we're talking about. What do... I need you to make me one. Pretty Styles, hit her up. She got her whole page on, on um, follow her. She be having deals, promotions, and everything. So um, um, hit her up, follow her page. And she all she do is promote her wigs. And she got you. Um, so everybody, yeah, so that's the show. That's what we was going to be talking about. Is there anything else that anybody wants to chime in and say? So I want to see if I got all of my points. Oh, is there anything that I wanted to say that I didn't say? Mm -hmm. Um, People don't are about folks in the world. These people are being released into God. Oh, you know what? I wanted to say. I don't know if I want to talk about that on this show. So I'm going to say that because I want to have a guess. Hey, J718456. It was something else that I wanted to talk about, but you know what? I'm not going to even bring that up because that's going to be a whole nother, um topic that I want to bring up that we're going to have a main discussion on and I have some um, guests in mind that um, we're going to talk about that on so I'm not going to bring that up so everybody what else do we talk about I know I wanted to give a big rest in peace to DMX and his um, um, you know 
my prayers and condolences go out to his family. And, um, I, you know, I said it in the beginning of the show and I wanted to talk about it again. Um, we talk, I, I, you know, I post a lot about mental health. I want to talk about, you know, DMX and how this man was going through a lot of issues. And he, you know, he expressed himself a lot in his music. He says, he, he talked about some of the childhood trauma that he went through and some of the adult trauma that he went through. And we saw that this man was fighting a lot of demons. And, you know, he used drugs to escape his reality or to cope with his reality. And I want to say a lot of people do that, whether it's weed, whether it's um, all these pills, whether it's alcohol or whatever. I feel like we don't know exactly, I'm hearing a bunch of rumors as to what exactly happened to him. If it was an overdose or somebody said it was, he got the vaccine and he had a heart attack, but whatever it is, is that how, we, all we know is he's, he, he's no longer here with us, but we do know that he struggled with drugs. And I just want people, our people to get the help that we need, that we are, that we need desperately. Like our mental health is at a, um, is, 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 is very important, you know? Let's use DMX as an example. I know I've seen a clip where they said that this man had $30 million in his bank account at one time. He was very respected. He had fame. He had the money, he had the fame, he had the clout, he had all of that. But he wasn't happy because he, had he, he hadn't dealt with the trauma, his trauma, whatever. So I know a lot of people feel like it's all about money, 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 chasing the bag, chasing the bag. And for me, I don't put money before me. Like mon money, is, money doesn't hold presidency in my life. I know a lot of people who think money is the most important thing. Oh, fuck that. They leave their family for weeks at a time. They this, that, they wife, the kids, they this, because I'm getting a, I'm getting to the money. But when we die, you know, you know, that Brinks truck, you're not being bought, but, um, buried in the Brinks truck. That money is not going with you. So, you know what I mean? It's not, to me, I never thought that money was the most important thing in my life. But what I will say is we have to deal with ment our mental health. I want to reach out. I mean, I want to send this out to men, especially, especially in our culture. Um, Because I, I see a lot of us women dealing with our trauma and dealing with our mental health. But there's so many men out here that don't want to talk about some of the trauma that they've been through and they suppressing it with drugs. They suppressing it with alcohol. They suppressing it with women, dealing with a whole bunch of different women and, and hurting them and all that because they don't want to deal with the real trauma that they, you know, that they um, endured. It's really about time that we start shifting things and changing the narratives. Like, we got enough that we got enough people against us. We need to start helping each other. And those people out here that believe in mental health and how you know um, mental health is um, important, you need to start having conversations amongst your friends, amongst your coworkers, amongst your um love your loved ones and your friends to you know we need to talk about mental health more and how important it is, and try to encourage people you know to um, deal with the trauma that they have um, endured because it's so many hurt people out here. And, and, and it's not just a cliche that hurt people hurt people. This is why it's so, I feel like it's not enough love out here. And it's like, people are really going crazy because it's, it's, they're not dealing with whatever traumas that they have went through. And we need to stop telling people to push things underneath the rug, oh, you tough. Oh, and shit like this happened every day, to, uh, every day, B. Niggas get shot every day, B. Niggas get cheated on every day, B. Like, let, let's stop minimizing people hurt and minimizing people trauma. So, you know, that's all I want to say is, you know, rest in peace to um, DMX and I um, hope he found the peace and afterlife that he didn't find here. And all those out there that may be going through something, you know, talk to somebody you know, seek the help that you need. Don't try to deal with it on your own and don't try to, you know, suppress your feelings and don't try to ignore it because 
ignoring it is not going to make it get better. All, all it's going to do is just, you know, you're going to eventually explode. You're going to hurt somebody or you're going to hurt yourself or you can, you know, self-destruct. So I'm going to end this live in this show on that note. You know, people take care of your mental health and you guys take care. Um, I will see y'all on the fourth Sunday of this month. Don't ask me what date it is, but see y'all in about two weeks. Not next, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after that. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And, and if anybody liked the show and um, y'all didn't get to see the show, y'all came in late or y'all left early or y'all want to tell anybody about the show, um, all of our shows is upla- uploaded to um, YouTube. You go to the, the Sador, S-A-D-I-O-R, um, radio YouTube page and you will see scroll down and you will see all of uncensored and thick girls radio that's what we was formerly known as all of our shows so don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when all when the shows are um, uploaded so everybody take care enjoy be safe and I'll see you guys later